I have been on a mission this year to wear every single thing in my wardrobe at least once. I have over 300 pieces of clothing, shoes, handbags in my wardrobe and I need to know what I actually want to be there. I started using fashion tracking apps about three months ago and in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I've found. I'm gonna break down the benefits of tracking what you wear, my method for recording outfits, how recording outfits has changed slash improved my style, and my top tips for styling your outfits digitally. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style consultant, and on this channel, we find our style by finding ourselves. So what actually are the benefits of recording your outfits? Firstly, I use so much more of my wardrobe. I can see now that I've used about 63% of my winter wardrobe, which I think is so much more than I would usually be using because you tend to repeat what you wear. You tend to be drawn especially to the new things you've bought because you want to get wear out of them and you're really excited by them, but then often they go to the back of wardrobe, you forget they exist. I have things in my wardrobe which are nearly 10 years old and I want to be wearing them. I want to know how to make them feel cool, modern and trendy and I don't just want to keep things out of fear of letting them go because I'm a very sentimental person. I do have a habit to be a clothes hoarder so I need to not do that. The reason I'm using so much more of my wardrobe is because you can see very clearly what you actually own rather than not being aware what has skittled away to the back of the wardrobe where you'll never find it again, it's very clearly there in front of you and if you hate the idea of wearing it, maybe it should go, maybe it's time to go. You can also see what you practically need. So I used to love buying high heels or the idea of high heels. I don't have anywhere to wear high heels. High heels are not a thing where I live. If I have to go up the city for a night out or a day out, I don't wanna be wearing heels because I'm gonna be there a long time and usually I'm driving because I don't drink alcohol and driving in very high heels is not practical. And if you're dancing, you don't wanna wear heels either. When I go out to dinner at a pub, it's weird to wear heels. There's just nowhere in my life where heels is an appropriate thing. So I now know I have enough, I don't need to buy any more, could probably get rid of one or two. So that's been really helpful. You can also see how sustainable you'll be I now know, having written all of the information down, that 15% of my wardrobe is pre-loved. I think that's pretty good. I think it could be a lot better. I'd love for about 25% to be pre-loved. However, I'm not gonna buy loads of pre-loved stuff just to hit that mark, if you know what I mean. Like I need to slowly work on my shopping habits and mostly wear the things that I already own. So basically, if I'm gonna be shopping, I need to be shopping pre-loved a little bit more. I am also more conscious of the pieces that I put together. I think often when you just pick your outfits from your wardrobe rather than digitally on an app, you reach for things that are just there, the first things you see or the easiest things. Whereas when I plan my outfits digitally on an app, either the night before or that morning, I can be much more conscious about, okay, that pattern has a little bit of red in it, maybe I want to wear a red shoe today, rather than, nah, I just need to wear my white trainers. <laughs> so you become a lot more conscious of the things that you're picking out, and I found, therefore, that my outfits have become more streamlined. As well as the statistics to do with pre-loved stuff, I'm making more sustainable choices. That number of I own over 300 items is suddenly like, whoa, that feels like a lot of clothes. There are people out there with capsule wardrobes who've spent years curating capsule wardrobes of 20 pieces and I have over 300 maybe I don't need that many clothes I love shopping it's a real big hobby of mine obviously my channels to do with fashion and style I love buying clothes it's my main hobby I absolutely adore it but I think it's important to be conscious of whether I'm buying things that I'm actually going to wear obviously when fashion is a hobby and when styling is a hobby what you need versus what you what you want is also important. Like a lot of people say, don't buy what you don't need. Sometimes what you want is okay too, as long as you're wearing that thing. Also seeing cost per wear has blown my mind. Like would you spend 40 pounds to wear a bag once? Probably not. If you were like, oh, 40 pounds to rent like a Zara bag for the day, I'm not doing that. But then you buy a piece of clothing and you wear it once. That's illogical. <laughs> 
So seeing that cost per wear of the items where I know what they originally cost has really made me think about my shopping habits as well. And lastly, another benefit, I have so much more fun putting pieces together. Like where you might usually be online shopping, you can shop your own wardrobe so much better. I like using Pinterest and like getting inspiration and putting outfits together. I will spend hours putting outfits together now online from my own wardrobe. So I have this constant supply of outfits that I'm really, really excited to wear rather than just being excited about wearing that new thing I've just bought. So what is my method for recording outfits? I use two apps. So I've digitally uploaded all my items twice just because I'm very obsessive. So I use open wardrobe and I use wearing. Something else I'd also really love to use is Blonde, Broke and Bougie on TikTok has these amazing graph templates that you can use to track your cost per wear. And she makes these amazing cost per wear videos. I'd love to track my outfits using that as well, just because I love especially the graph where you can see like the highest cost per wear and least used. And you can see like lowest cost per wear, most used kind of thing. I think they're amazing. So you can see like the real value of the things in your wardrobe. Like, is it really worth buying that like 1000 pound bag? Do you actually wear your bags that much? So I think that would be so, so valuable. I just love the statistics of that. I have that kind of brain, you might not. I would say that's probably the most complex option, but if you really wanna get like a deep dive, I think that's the way forward. So open wardrobe and wearing, they're both really, really great. I use them in different ways. Open wardrobe I've been using for longer and I would say it's my favorite still. So open wardrobe is really great because you can have your complete wardrobe and then you can have lots of different wardrobes. You can essentially have edits of your wardrobe. So you can have, so I, for example, have like a moon edit, which is one of my style roots. So I've got all the things in my wardrobe, which feels slightly more edgy, slightly more intricate, slightly more celestial, slightly more like emo grunge, dark inspired. So for example, if I wanted to go to like a rock concert and I just wanted to have a little bit of inspiration from that, that's what I would do. And I also have like a mermaid core wardrobe, a French girl wardrobe. So I find it's quite a fun way to go shopping within your own wardrobe. So open wardrobe is amazing for that. You can also view your wardrobe by your least worn and your most worn. So I sort my clothes by least worn. I pick something that I haven't worn yet and then I make an outfit around it. You can make outfits on there. You can add your looks. So you can add your favorite outfit, pictures of your favorite outfits. It also involves a planner. So you can plan what outfits you're wearing and track what you're wearing day to day. I love the feature where you can zoom out and see the outfits you've worn in the month. So you can look at patterns of what you're wearing. Wearing has really good statistics, I think. So you can see the overall cost of your wardrobe. My number that I have for the cost of my whole wardrobe is inaccurate because I have so many pieces that are old. Um, so I don't have the cost of most of the things that I own. But if you were like, starting a capsule wardrobe from scratch, it'd be great. You can also see, for example, like how much you've spent on your wardrobe that year. Wearing is also got the statistics on how pre-loved your wardrobe is. They also have this amazing little graph for the colors that are in your wardrobe. Mine is mostly black and white, even though I don't like wearing black because it's not in my color season. Neither is white technically. So you can see where maybe you need to correct a little bit, um, get rid of some things that aren't really great for your color palette. I will say both is a lot of effort initially, especially if you have as many clothes as I have, if not more. By the way, I would just like to say, if you have more clothes than me, some of you will. Some of you will have, like a lot of influencers I see, will have hundreds and hundreds of clothes. That's fine, we all have different things in our lives. And same if you're the other way, like if you have only like 20, 30 pieces of clothing, that's fine too, we're all, doing our own thing. We all choose to spend our money in different ways. Hopefully the things I'm saying will be helpful to you either way. So how has recording my outfits changed my style? Well, I've actually had this huge revelation. I have been saying to you guys that my style roots are mushroom, flower, and fire ever since I invented the style root system. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, I really recommend watching this video where I break down the style roots and tell you what that's all about and how you can use them. So I realized that actually my style roots, rather than being mushroom, flower, and fire, are mushroom, flower, and sun. So mushroom is the minimal, neutral, elegant, timeless influence in my style. Flower is the delicate, feminine, pretty, sweet, intricate element of my style. And sun is the creative, playful, 
part of me that I like to get through in my outfits. And I would say that it was tracking what clothes I actually enjoy wearing, being more conscious of the things I'm putting on my body, the clothes that I naturally gravitate towards, the clothes that I dread wearing, that made me come to this conclusion about sun, and also like my most worn clothes, the clothes that I come back to again and again. So I found that it's really helped me define my style more clearly, and then when I go shopping, I can keep that in mind that I really like creative, playful touches to my style. And today I identified 30 pieces in my wardrobe that I wanna get rid of. Our time together is over. There are some things that I've been holding on to there out of huge sentimentality, cause you know, it was my favorite dress when I was 17 or whatever, and it's gotta go. And so I'm getting much closer to my dream wardrobe and my dream style. I will say that I'm not all that into closet clear outs. It's not something that I generally believe in and I'm not trying to encourage that too much. Um, I did a entire load of stories, which I'm gonna put in a highlight recently, where I talked about how a lot of people kind of preach that as sustainable shopping of getting rid of the things you don't wear anymore and replacing with things that feel more aligned to you and you're gonna get a lot more wear out of. That is true to an extent, but I think a lot of people have these huge clear outs, sometimes every month, every two months, um, and then they just replace with the current latest trends, get rid of those trends, get new trends, rather than trying to build a wardrobe more slowly that feels more attuned to you and who you are. So I would be really cautious about what I'm saying about clear outs, especially as in the UK, I don't know about the US and other countries, but we export a lot of clothes to Ghana especially. I'm gonna put a little clip here from a BBC video which has really changed the way that I think about clothes. A lot of the clothes that we're giving even to charity shops, especially donating to charity shops and through clothing banks where you think you're doing something good and that it's gonna get more use out of, it probably isn't gonna get more use out of it which is a real shame. It's some things will be sold, some things will go to those charity shops, but most things are going to landfill because charity shops can't shift them. They cannot get rid of enough clothes. So this is very important. Don't casually throw out clothes. If you can give that item of clothing a second chance, I really recommend that you do that. But obviously some things, it is time for it to go and you have had your wear and your use out of it. Okay, my top tips on styling digitally. For recreating outfits, I really love using Pinterest side by side with usually open wardrobe is where I intend to make my outfits. Um, although saying that there's this feature on wearing that I'm becoming uh, more familiar with that I'm loving to use. You can create mood boards on wearing. You can sort your outfits into these different mood boards. So I can have like a mood board of outfits for like mushroom flower sun or like a mood board for coquette aesthetic where I create outfits and put them into little boards. There is something similar on, com on open wardrobe which I talked about earlier, but you sort your clothes on there into the different boards, you create like little clothing edits, whereas on this you create like little outfit edits. So it's slightly different and they're both useful in different ways. So anyway, I use Pinterest, I have that open, I have like a Pinterest board of outfits that I really, really love and curated, and I basically try to recreate that outfit as closely as I can in open wardrobe. This has taught me so much about styling, about proportions, about what kind of things I like to see together and how I can recreate that in my own wardrobe and also help me find my gaps. So the things where I'm like, oh, I've tried to find a red ballet flat five times um, and I don't have one or anything even slightly similar to that. So then you can put that on an ultimate shopping list of things that you're really looking out for so that you don't do so many impulse buys of buying trends and shoes that you don't really want or need and not really that drawn to. You just like saw it in the shop and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you buy it. Rather than that, you know exactly what you are and what you're not looking for. And on that note, just make as many categories as you can, whether it's those mood boards, whether it's the outfit board, whether it's the mini edits on open wardrobe. I think this feels so much like shopping and I'd really recommend that. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned something about recording your outfits. If you want my help to find your style, make sure to head to bodyinstyle.com and I can help you find your body type, color season, essence, create you a style package. Um, there's loads of things on there and also a load of products. So make sure that you are checking that out. If you've enjoyed this video, you should definitely go and watch the best gadgets for your wardrobe because I think if you're interested in these apps, you'd be interested in the more physical ways to improve your style and wardrobe accessibility. Thank you so much, I will see you next time.